Okay, uh, Daryl, yesterday we talked about the transcription factors in our previous lecture and today we will talk about the regulation of transcription control. Uh, as you can see, this is a model of uh, uh, transcription control. We have got four steps in it. The first one is chromatin remodeling, second one is exposure of promoter, third one assembly of proteins and fourth one is attachment of RNA polymerase. So these are four major uh, steps. Let's look at them one by one. So what you see here initially is a condensed form of uh, chromatin and then this is being relaxed and what you see here uh, these two histone molecules these are bound by what we call chromatin remodeling complexes. Uh, someone also asked a question in one of the previous lectures where do the activators bind to the exclusively bind to the enhancers and if yes uh, how do they bind to the enhancers when they are embedded inside this uh, uh, condensed form of chromatin so there are two uh, things that uh, play a major role uh, one is uh, the uh, activators if you want to get a gene expressed we have previously discussed that they're involved in relaxation of the chromatin itself and uh, they can also, the activators generally bind to the enhancer sequences like here um, and they can affect the promoter activity. But there are also cases where they can bind to certain other regions on the chromatin and they, they, they have the ability to recruit what we call chromatin remodeling complexes. Here's an example of hats. We are not going into details at the moment. We have to study them later, but you need to understand that there are two things which are playing a part um, as far as activation of the or expression of the genes is concerned. One is your activators and the second one is chromatin remodeling complexes. So activators can either bind to these enhancer sequences and have a direct influence on the promoter activity or there are also activator molecules which help in recruitment of chromatin remodeling complexes and what do chromatin remodeling complexes do we will study them in details but at the moment you need to understand that they can either modify these histone proteins or even they have the ability to kick them out so that the DNA can be relaxed and all of these regulatory sequences like these are the enhancer regions and here you have got a promoter region so that all of these regions can be exposed to the transcription machinery. So once the DNA is relaxed, uh, the, 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 once the chromatin is remodeled or it is relaxed, then the second thing is the exposure of the promoter. So uh, this relaxation of the chromatin and removal of the DNA from the histone proteins makes it possible for the transcriptional machinery to access promoter region. So promoter region is the landmark for the initiation of transcription. It is necessary that the transcription machinery has gotten access to the promoter region. Here you see the uh, proximal promoter. Here is the gene that needs to be transcribed and here you have got one enhanced region and here is the second enhanced region. After exposure of the promoter, the third step is assembly of proteins. So different types of proteins need to be recruited to the promoter region or to the proximal promoter or to the enhanced regions. We have already studied this, that here you have got the promoter region. So the general transcription factors are going to bind to the promoter region. And then there are, there are certain gene-specific uh, transcription factors which would bind to the proximal promoter and then we have got these these two red regions this one and this one which are shown here so the DNA is looped back here and here as well and at both of these two enhancer sequences what we ha have are also regular regulatory uh, transcription factors which are shown in pink here and these are basically your activator molecules and these activator molecules are then uh, going to interact with the mediator proteins and why are these mediator proteins they can interact with the general transcription factors which were associated 
with the promote region. So uh, perhaps Eman asked a question, how do transcription factors affect the transcriptional activity? So uh, here is a beautiful example, as you can see, that uh, uh, this is a transcription factor, it's an activator. At one end, it is bound to the DNA, so that is the DNA binding domain of the transcription factor, and this is the transcription activation domain. This is the domain where it interacts with another protein, either directly to any of the transcription factors or to the mediator proteins. So basically at one end the transcription factor is interacting with the DNA and at the other end it is interacting with the different type of proteins. So after assembly of different types of these proteins where you have got the general transcription factors, uh, some other specific transcription factors which bind to the uh, promoter proximal element we have already studied some of them and then uh, uh, there are certain uh, proteins which are now bound to the enhanced regions and these proteins we call them uh, um, activators and then there are also some uh, mediator proteins so this completes the assembly of proteins onto it now there's uh, one last protein which is the most important one and that is RNA polymerase 2 which needs to be recruited to this basal transcription complex so after recruitment of the RNA polymerase 2 it is attached onto the DNA and it starts the uh, transcription process uh, let's look at it uh, in a little more detail so what you see here on the right side in A uh, this is a gene this is the promoter region where it says, uh, sorry, it's the transcription start site. And here you see the Tata box. And as we have previously discussed, Tata box lies within the promoter region. So basically, this is the promoter region. And this is the Tata box. This is the region which would be recognized by the Tata binding protein. And Tata binding protein is domain of basically transcription factor 2D. So transcription factor 2D lands onto the promoter region and associates itself with the Tata box. So there's a uh, uh, there's an interaction between Tata binding protein and the Tata box. And this is uh, as uh, this is shown here in details. So this is basically uh, uh, the DNA and as you can see TATA -T -A, this is the Tata box and this protein which is bound to the Tata box this is the Tata binding protein so what is the function of Tata binding protein the function of the Tata binding protein is to untwist the DNA so it produce it, it relaxes the DNA so basically it bends the DNA in such a way that uh, that the DNA becomes relaxed and it be, it becomes untwisted so that the promoter region can be exposed for the transcriptional machinery. So uh, then uh, second transcription factor uh, which is basically uh, transcription factor 2A is recruited first uh, which lands onto the upstream side of uh, transcription factor 2D and then transcription factor 2B is recruited on towards the uh, downstream side of the transcription factor 2D. It is not clearly shown here. It is not well presented. Uh, they didn't show transcription factor 2A in this figure. But this is the region where transcription factor 2A binds and this is the region where transcription factor 2B binds. Basically transcription factor 2 could be a bit uh, larger so that's how they have shown it. But anyhow, uh, after transcription factor 2D to be when this is bound to it uh, so now you have got transcription factor 2d transcription factor 2a and transcription factor, transcription factor 2b bound to the promoter region this now recruits rna polymerase 2 which is associated with transcription factor 2f which is recruited by so here you have got transcription factor 2e which recruits them and then this also recruits transcription factor 2h so transcription factor 2f is identical to sigma factor in bacteria which is also involved in uh, recruitment of RNA polymerase 2 so it has got structural similarities to the uh, sigma factor so after all of these uh, general transcription factors they are bound to the 
promoter region and the RNA polymerase has been recruited uh, here's a special candidate which is transcription factor 2H it has got uh, two unique functions uh, it has got an intrinsic helicase activity helicase means after the Tata binding protein has un had untwisted the DNA now it needs to uh, break apart this DNA uh, it needs to rip apart this DNA so that the uh, template strand is exposed to the RNA polymerase so because of its helicase activity it is going to cleave these bonds and um, uh, the template strand is now is now exposed to the RNA polymerase and the second unique activity this transcription rate factor 2H has that's a kinase activity as as we have previously discussed um, kinases are the enzymes which have the ability to phosphorylate other proteins so as you see here this is the RNA polymerase 2 and it has got a tail this tail is known as C terminal domain and it is composed of roughly 52 tandem repeats of uh, seven amino acids so um, what transcription factor 2H is going to do it is going to phosphorylate this tail because it has got a kinase activity so it has the ability to phosphorylate the tail of RNA polymerase 2 enzyme after this tail is phosphorylated so uh, serine 5 is phosphorylated so uh, in this case so every serine molecule would be phosphorylated by transcription factor 2H on the C terminal domain of the RNA polymerase so phosphorylation we have previously discussed that it leads to the conformational changes in the protein that is phosphorylated so if you phosphorylate RNA polymerase then RNA polymerase is going to change its shape so this conformational change basically helps the RNA polymerase to initiate transcription and except the first two factors that were transcription factor 2D and transcription factor 2A all the other general transcription factors which which we have discussed here they are dissociated from this uh, complex and what is left here is transcription factor 2D and transcription factor 2A so that they can recruit another new RNA polymerase 2 the as you can see the other transcription factors uh, they have been transcription factor 2E, transcription factor 2H, transcription factor 2F, all of them have been dissociated. So this conformational change and dissociation of other general transcription factors basically uh, it helps the RNA polymerase initiate transcription. So what the RNA polymerase uh, is going to do it is going to uh, in the beginning it is going to produce short strands of RNA uh, molecule so that would be the messenger RNA so in the beginning it starts producing these uh, these short strands of RNA molecules until it leaves this uh, basal transcription complex and it goes from initiation of uh, transcription into the or from the transcription initiation phase into the transcription elongation phase and this is what we call promoter escape means the RNA polymerase needs to escape this promoter region so that it can go into the elongation phase so there's a threshold of roughly uh, 10 uh, nucleotides so it will keep producing these short strands of RNA molecules and we call this uh, abortive transcription because it produces short strand of RNA molecule and then aborts it and then produces another short strand of RNA molecule until it reaches a threshold of 10 nucleotides when it reaches at the RNA polymerase when it reaches the threshold of roughly 10 RNA molecules then it would be able to leave this region and that's what we call promoter escape and then it would go into the elongation phase I hope you understand everything on this uh, slide if you have any comments you can post me you, you have got any question you can uh, post me your questions and I would uh, try to answer your questions indeed so I have added some uh, text into the notes you can read it yourself it's basically more or less the same stuff that we have previously discussed 
So these are three slides. I have also added something about the promoter escape. So this slide basically talks about the different functions of uh, different uh, general transcription factors. These are not special transcription factors. These are general transcription factors. Uh, general transcription factors means uh, they would be associated with uh, RNA polymerase 2 irrespective of the gene that is being transcribed. So here you see in the beginning we have got this transcription, transcription factor 2D. We have previously discussed that it has got two different types of subunits. One is this Tata binding uh, protein uh, which recognizes the Tata box and then we have got this Tata associated factors TAF6 and TAF9. Uh, if you go to one of your previous uh, slides we already discussed about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, we talked about the. Yeah, so here you have got this downstream promoter element. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, some genes may not have a Tata box, but they can still be transcribed, and that's because of the downstream promoter element, the presence of the downstream promoter element ensures that this gene would be transcribed. So you can have genes with a Tata box, you can have genes with a down, downstream promoter element and you can also have genes which contain both of these two elements, the Tata box and the downstream uh, promoter element and this is the B recognition uh, element. Um, so Tata associated factors TAF6 and TAF9 are basically going to bind to this downstream promoter element and Tata box is associated with Tata binding protein. So transcription factor 2D might be landing on this promoter region like this. So here you have got the Tata binding protein and here you have got the Tata associated factors. Let's go back to our current slide. Yeah. So it's mentioned here and you have got this Tata binding we We have this uh, transcription factor 2b it recognizes the BRE element in promoters and it helps in positioning the RNA polymerase at the start site of the transcription of the transcription transcription factor 2f it stabilizes the RNA polymerase interaction with Tata binding protein and transcription factor 2b and it also helps attract transcription factor 2e and 2h and we have discussed this that this has got functions similar to sigma factor in bacteria and then you have got transcription factor 2e uh, which is involved in attracting and regulating transcription factor 2h and at the end we have got transcription factor 2h which has got two unique functions one it has got a uh, helicase activity and second one it has also got uh, uh, kinase activity it is capable of phosphorylation and uh, it is also capable of, capable of ripping apart the DNA. So what it is going to do, it is going to unwind the DNA. The transcription starts a uh, point obviously in association with Tata binding protein and then it phosphorylates in five of the RNA polymerase C-terminal domain and it also helps in releasing the RNA polymerase from the promoter region. I have added here transcription factor 2a because it was not mentioned uh, on the previous slides. So what transcription factor 2a is going to do, it is going to interact with the Tata binding protein subunit of transcription factor 2d and it helps in binding of the Tata binding protein to Tata box. Clear? I think that's uh, sufficient for today and we will talk about the DNA binding domains in our next lecture. Thank you very much.